how we do. We turn to the noise, it's how we do. How we do. You know it's how we do. Everybody, welcome to the Crown Peach Show. I'm your host, Chris, and with me today are some special, special guests, not only my friends, but also music producer Bronick, Abby Losis, and Mellow Man Ace. So we're here today, and I want to hear about this very special program that was your idea, Mellow? Yeah. Yes? Can you talk about Well, actually, no, it, it was uh, City Councilman David Argudo's idea. Is that one of your friends? From La Puente. La Puente. Uh, I met him during a, a networking event called Lana, and um, and he, you know a lot of people got up and they spoke about what they do, mm -hmm. and who, you know their little bit of background and all that. And he said he was a city councilman for the city of La Puente. And when I got up, I spoke and I said, "Yo, Melo Manes, multi um, platinum artist, Say blah it. blah blah." Yep. <laughs> he after the whole thing, he's like, "Melo, I want to talk to you," and. Um, he said, I have this idea to bring a music program to the city of La Puente. And I hadn't done anything like that. I've done some a lot of speaking engagements around the country. Mm -hmm. I've spoken, you know, in the, in, in, the, in the sense of Latino and black culture mixed, you know, like black Tinos, yeah. uh, Afro Latinos, and you know, from anywhere from the Oscar Schomburg Museum to NY, NYU, um, also places like, you know, um, Pepperdine University wow. and several colleges and prisons. And I, you know, at that time it was Chuck D of Public Enemy that put me in that position, but I hadn't done anything like this before. So you've spoken on music, but nothing like teaching music into the youth. Well, it was more about giving them a direction. I had a program called the program because mm -hmm. your life should be, have it should be a program, right? And if you stick to your program, you'll have tunnel vision as to what you need to do minus all the distractions going on around you, right? So I would drive that word home to them. And you got to have a program. And where's your program? Who's in your program? What's your program, right? And so for this, it had to be something different because it was about educating um, kids from 8 to 21 through music mm -hmm. and through the things that I had already learned in the field of the entertainment world, right? For at that time, it was 32 years when he talked to me and that was last year. Okay. So then I heard nothing from him. About six months went by, never heard from him. One day I'm playing golf. I get a phone call on the, on the golf course and he says, you ready? I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm ready. Wow. What's up? What you want to so do? So the whole time you didn't hear from him, he was backstage planning this all out. Well, I'm sure he was because he's, he moves very methodically. And when you're a city councilman, you have to plan things months in advance. Mm -hmm. You have to plan things months in advance. And so he called me when he was ready, not so much when I was ready. Yeah. So that when I got the call, I hung up and I heard what he said. And I hung up and I started thinking, like, who can I bring in on this because I know I can't do it alone. Yeah. So right away I started thinking um, about Abby because Abby's been a friend of mine for over 20 years and we've recorded records. Um, you know, we have a hit record on the on the movie Crazy Beautiful with Kristen Dunst together. Nice. We had collaborated on and yes. I knew she had background in the educational part of, mm -hmm. of music because she's also a teacher and instructor. Yeah, isn't she in the a music teacher realm. of She's your teacher as well, correct? Yeah, she absolutely taught me how to play percussion last year, and now I play it on stage all the time, play percussion on stage, yeah. and having fun a lot with that. And then secondly, I, I thought Ooh, of Bronick, I thought of my friend Bronick, who I've known for over 30 years, and he produced on my second album. And um, he, I knew that when it came to keyboards, synthesizers and whatnot that he'd be the guy for it yeah right so i called these two and we got on the same page i told them what i had going on and they right away they they both agreed to be a part of it that's beautiful so you guys have known each other what 20 years 30 years this is a well-oiled like machine right <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, as friends, we just came together as this this threesome here, this three uh -huh. of people, these energies, right? These three energies. But individually, I've known them for different reasons. When I first met Abby, she came in on a Cypress Hill um, studio yeah, was session. She was singing on some Cypress Hill music. And um, 
that's when I first met her. Wow. Right? Yeah. So when I needed a vocalist for my song, Ten La Fe, mm-hmm. for the movie, mm-hmm. I, I thought of her right away. You know what I'm saying? So, yes. and, and then got Bron- the vocals for sure. Right, oh. right. And, and Bron, I've known since we were <laughs> young kids recording. I think the first time he tracked a song for me, he was 17 years old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I made that beat when I was 17. And then we we met up back in like, it was like 1989 or 1990. And uh, I did a track on the second album, but I also did like a, what number of album was that? That was, was my second album. Second entire, the, I did an entire album mm-hmm. um, in the 2000s. Oh, the Van Gogh Cobra album, yeah. So it's 17. Oh, I knew it. 17, I started, I was, I was making music like 16, 17 years old, and I started working with a lot of the LA rappers. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I ended up working with like King T, and I was down with like Ice T and Lime Syndicate. Nice. Um, I ended up working with Ice T and then uh, a bunch of people in the music business, and I ended up meeting Mello. But when we got together, it was like, um, we just like developed a friendship. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it went beyond music. We just, we just like uh, really got along. We like uh, had a chemistry together. That's and, great. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun like doing shows. Yeah, you guys act like brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're I saw, saying in the middle? I'm my brother. So, at like, what age did you know music was the direction you wanted to go in? Uh, I think I was like, I was like, in, probably like twelve years old or something. What I inspired seen, you? I saw. I actually saw. Um, I went to like a show that was like break dancing. It was like um, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five nice. and um, Cameo performed. And I was like, I want to do that right there. So I became, I first became a DJ mm-hmm. and I started going in on people's stuff and like scratching on records. Mixing or, like, it up, re- huh? Yeah, remixing stuff. Um, and then that led to me making beats. And then uh, one thing led to another. Like I worked with Julio. Back, you know, back in the day, like rest in peace, R.I.P. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, and then that was like King Team, Ice Cube. Um, I ended up doing like all kinds of R and B stuff, like Brian McKnight. So besides Mello, who's your favorite person that you've gotten to work with over the years? <laughs> Mello is definitely one of my favorites because he knows he knows exactly what he wants, and like we we somehow have a way of um, being able to see the same vision. I can make a track and um, he knows how to get get the whole thing together and like get it to the next level like mm-hmm. you can see that same vision some artists aren't really like that um, Brian McKnight actually was really talented and could play many instruments uh, it was fun to hang out with like King T and Ice T in all those early days of hip hop yeah. um, there was just something special about hip hop back then like yes. a lot of the yeah, back then, it's hard uh, to find that special feeling yeah. nowadays. I know, saying. yeah. The record labels, it was like actually hard for us because we were like on major labels or working with major labels, but at the same time, hip hop wasn't kind of like considered a legitimate form of music yet. Yeah. And people didn't really realize how, lar- how large it was going to become. Mm-hmm. So um, it was kind of like a struggle um, trying to like find our space. With the record labels and in the music business then but um the love of it and all the, the people that came together like really made it happen like, mm-hmm. it was like a pretty tight-knit community at the time in la so I, that's how i think i met i met bella through a group called press but they were signed to priority records but like i think he said he was looking for new producers for his second album and he wanted to do something that was like R&B, hip hop, like mm-hmm. New Jack Swing. And they told him, we know this guy named Bronick. Wow. And so um, we met up and that was it. The it's rest like was a, history. Yeah, like a divine connection <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. Perfect timing. And that, that's the other thing. We, uh, we ended up like becoming friends and like he would come over and my mom would say hi and give him a plate of food and she, <laughs> like, she loved him. And I would go over to his house on Cypress Ave and like his mom would like tell me to come into the kitchen and we drink Cuban coffee together and it's all over there. That is a precious memory. Recipes, mom. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That is a precious memory. Yes. Yes. Abby, when did you know music was your thing, your direction? I was a teenager. Teenager's I mom. Just um, 
I grew up in a desert town where there was nothing to do. Where? There was a Calexico. Uh, border, border town in California. Mm -hmm. Right on the border. And there was no movie theater. And there was no, you know, it was just the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I was, I was tearing my hair out. I mean, it was bored out of your mind. Bored and um, music saved my life, you know, to be honest. And yeah, if it wasn't for that, I, I, I don't know what I would have done with myself. But I mean, I started playing and that's all I did. Play, 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 play different instruments. Um, Which one did you, did you pick up first? Um, the piano. Piano. The keyboard. Yeah. And I did that for many years until, and then I played guitar mm -hmm. and, uh, and vocals. So by the time I came to LA, I could do all three. Now, um, the song, your, the song that I love to death, Flying, is that your first solo, like your first song? So as a solo, solo yes. yeah. yeah, that's the first one. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, I, I love it. It is, mm -hmm. it is my go-to song, you know, like when I uplifting and also when I need like, I need to release some emotions, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we're really like prideful, we hold on to the crap, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm getting a signal really quick from our producer. We're gonna take a break, and during this break, we're gonna put up the flyer of the edutainment program. Hey, coming down my clothes, trying to peel off the layers to my soul. Cause uh that's where I feel it down deep. You know what I mean? It's real deep. And I only wanna share with y'all like a bird of a bear for y'all. All my back from our break and I just wanted to talk to Abby a little bit more about the song Flying. So that was your first single. My first single, yeah. And yes, we have yes. more on the horizon, right? Please tell me more. Yes, there's more. Okay. There's a lot more coming. Okay, it, good. It, it, and I was hoping to uh, release them last year, but it just other other projects got in the way. That's which okay, is okay. Girl, take your it's time. good to work. It's good to work. But yes. <laughs> there's a lot of more releases this year, so de definitely, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to that. So Flying, how the inspiration for that song, how long did it take? Um, yeah. I'm like a fan, I'm like a super fan. You're like, tell me all about the song. Well, I mean, honestly, it's 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 real simple. It's just I went through a really uh, difficult time in my life, many years of it. Mm -hmm. um, I I struggled and suffered certain personal things in a in a very difficult marriage and other things. And and mm -hmm. you know, so so by the time I wrote it, it was all in the past. Yeah. And it was sort of a celebration, like you know, flying. I'm gonna get. I'm going to move on now. This mm -hmm. is, you know, I'm ready to go to move forward from all of this stuff that I went through. Yeah. And um, so it's a celebration in a way, but it's also a way to remind myself, you know, when I listen to it, it reminds me, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, go I'm okay. Yeah. I, I, I got through that. I got through just that. Fine. Exactly. It, so, it, so it just, it yeah. feels like a healing anthem. Yeah. It that's really how does. It feels. That's why, that's what I, you know, it's funny because the producers that I, that I work with, he, they wanted me, the, the team that I'm with, wanted me to re, um, release something different, right? Mm -hmm. But I said, no, I can't. It has to be this one because it's it depicts the beginning, my, this new chapter. And good for you. And so that's why I chose that one. Because it's important to you. Yeah, and it's good for you. A lot of times I think, uh, not that I've ever been in the music industry, and this is my first radio here, but I feel like a lot of times musicians get pushed over by you know the record labels or the uh, writers or other producers on that mm -hmm. track to do something that doesn't feel right to them. So kudos to you, girlfriend, thank for you, doing what you. felt good no, to you. Because it I feels mean, good to me when I blast it every day. Awesome, awesome. And you know, I get a lot of, um, mostly women, but it's, you know, hey, I'm sure hopefully some men too uh, uh, mm -hmm. get the feeling of what I'm trying to portray. But it's it's good that um, certain people have commented the same as you. And that makes me feel good as a good. writer, you know. So yeah, because you're speaking to the volumes, you know. And there's people that don't, that walk around every day with hurt and they don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I just felt like it was really personal to you. Felt oh, it. definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. Yes. Melo, same question, because I want to know, when did the love for music start for you? How, how young were you? Well, I come from a musical family mm -hmm. um, from Cuba. So my grandfather was the leader of the Cuban military army band he was the oh, orchestra wow. leader and all of my uncles aunts cousins are all musicians so that's something that is already in the blood however my father didn't want me to be a musician he wanted me to be a baseball player and um, when i was playing baseball there was a time where you had to keep a C average. And I was a terrible student because I was always behind the learning curve mm -hmm. coming from a third world country, never caught up to the learning the language and all these other things. So I never, I couldn't make the grade to play baseball. And luckily at that same time, 1983, 84, hip hop was getting really strong. Mm 
with groups like Run DMC, mm -hmm. Eric B and Rakim, and groups like that that were really incredible and very dynamic. And so I started to dabble in break dancing and hip hopping. And I be, first I started as a graffiti artist. Um, and then that got difficult. And then I started b-boying and break dancing. And when I saw the 1990 move, which is incredibly, it's like you spin on your hand, but vertically upside down. I said, I can't do that. So I said, I better grab the mic. Yeah, me neither. And I can't do it either. <laughs> so at that time, I started doing the history of hip hop. Mm -hmm. And I started to learn who and why people were important. The, the DJ Cool Herks, the Grandmaster Flashes, the Africa Bambadas, mm -hmm. the, you know, Rocksteady crew. And yeah. then we started seeing films, big picture films in the theaters of hip hop. Movies like Wild Style, mm -hmm. Beach Street, Crush Groove. Now we're seeing hip hop on the big screen. So I felt if I do this right, I can end up on the big screen or or whatnot, right? Yeah. Because we had a template now. So um, I recruited a guy by the name of Be Real, and I I went with my brother, introduced him to my brother back on our block, Cypress Avenue. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we really started to hone our skills. We took in another brother that went to school with us, Tomahawk Funk. He was in a group called Funk Dubious later. Mm -hmm. and we all started to form sectors within ourselves, right? Um, so by the time I got kicked out of the house <laughs> at the age of 19, right? Uh -huh. I believed in myself so much. Um, by the time that wow. happened, we had Cypress Tribe, Mellow Man Ace, and Funk Dubious. You know, we had groups already formed. And yeah. then we had another guy by the name of Crazy D, who was the only Mexican that was down with NWA at that time. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was learning hip hop leaving baseball at the same time at the age of 14, 15, mm -hmm. and then really going for self and, and really doing my thing, hanging out in Hollywood at the clubs at the at the age of 18, 19, Just putting 20, yourself out there. And making sure that I met the right people yeah. and hung out at the right spots, and that's what I did. I think what, you know, in that moment in time, it was... It was a cool thing to do, like, hey, this is what I'm doing. You know, you want to hop in on this, you know what I mean? Nowadays, it's like everyone is so hush-hush about their moves. And I get that, too. You know, I'm a private person, too. But we have too much pride, I think, nowadays, where we don't say, well, hey, I got this in the works. You want to hop on this? Or what can yeah. you bring to this team or this table? You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, like my producer, Ryan, it took me forever to, to reach out and say, hey. And saying, hey, now look, here, here he is running the whole show, the whole shit show. <laughs> but, but, you know what I mean? Excuse so, me. I feel like, imagine if you wouldn't have reached out to Be Real. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Be Real, was in, he was in my breakdance crew and he was younger. Mm -hmm. I was now, you know, let's say I was 17, he was 15, 14. And so, he, he was a I saw I saw something special in him, mm -hmm. and so I went one day to the high school where we were. The crew used to hang out on the bleachers, and I called the whole crew out, and I said, "I'm taking him with me. We're wow. gonna we're gonna do this for real." And lo and behold, now that guy has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That's awesome. So that's my my little homeboy. So you can yeah. spot some stars, huh? I like to think I you know yeah. I like to think so. I think I know what's good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't know. I can't tell you that, like, okay, if I look across the room and say that kid's a star, yeah. But I can tell you they have special qualities and that 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 attract me to them mm -hmm. and their energy, you know. Yeah. So because it's not just the quality or, or shine; you have to work at it. You know, you can't just shine bright without you know brushing some stuff off sure. and standing up and doing your thing. But I think that's so cool that you were older and you saw a younger kid that had potential. Yeah, that's and so to me, he was like the little brother that I never had. At that time, mm -hmm. little did I know that I, when I introduced my little brother mentally to my older brother, they would click even heavier. Wow. You know what I mean? And I think it was because I was the one in the front and they were the dancers in the background. Mm -hmm. um, but they still had a vision of their own. And I always say, I always say, be careful. You never know what the next man is thinking. You know, be careful how you treat people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though I went out and I looked out and he'll tell you himself. He took care of me. He took he took me out of the gutter and took me to Hollywood. You know, and and um, you have to you know when you have a when you're in a crew situation is, you know, 
it's one for all and all for one. But at the mm -hmm. same time, individually here, this person might have a different vision and he might be thinking bigger on his own mm -hmm. out of the collective. Yeah. Right. And this man over there, he might be going through some things. He may not be going too much uh, to too much. And next year he'll tap out. Mm -hmm. He'll tap out. Right. And so you have all these different energies and ideas and concepts going on around you. Although there is a collective idea of getting to the top and the unit to yeah. rise. Right. Well, sometimes when that happens and the unit rises, there's becomes an ego issue. There become a jealousy, envy, ego from this one or that one. And those types of things you have to be aware of before you commence something so powerful and you put a lot of energy into it because it could break you all apart. Yes. Yes. Or people fall off on their own mm -hmm. and then you're like, no, I don't want them to go. But you know, it's God's plan. He, there's reasons why they're falling off. They're not good for the next level we're going to or something like that. True. Indeed. True. Indeed. So when, in terms of your program, um, I love the name of it. Did you come up with the name of it? I believe Abby did. Abby. The Mellow Man. Uh, no, we, we were well. We're we were kicking ideas. ideas. We were kicking ideas, and then but he he came up with like five versions, and <laughs> I was the one who said, "Well, let's get one that that we can uh, abbreviate the the best." Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so it was like M and and um, M M A E A was it just sounded better. And Mellow Man is edutainment arts. Edutainment arts. And so we settled with that one. It's a really cool name. That's cool. So right now it is in the city of La Puente. Yes, and we're right, we're reaching out to Belinda, the city of Belinda, mm -hmm. Avocado Heights, Bassett, Roland Heights, and Hacienda Heights as well. They could all the kids eight to twenty one in all those cities can partake in the program going down okay. at the La Puente Community Center. Just those cities for right now. Yeah, uh, I mean it's San Gabriel Valley. Got you know it. what I mean? La Puente mm -hmm. is the spearhead of it is where the idea came from the roots the foundation mm -hmm. is there and mm -hmm. uh, right now it's a 10-week program it's a 10-week like semester mm -hmm. right and uh it goes on it starts every thursday and it's thursday, free starting that's april, that's important too yeah. april it's free 20th, it's, it's all paid for yeah. starts april 20th and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's free. completely free to your children the city of la puente has picked up the tab mm -hmm. that is beautiful in Shout my class out. now let's yeah. break it down we gotta break it down <laughs> yeah in my class you will learn Rapping in English, in Spanish, and Spanglish, being that I, that's my forte, yeah. I'm the master of that. And you're gonna learn how to have stage presence. You're gonna learn how to, um, you know, put things together, how to become sort of like a band leader almost, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then in Abby's class, Abby, you wanna take that? In, in my class, um, the kids are gonna learn how to sit, develop their vocals, their voice play the piano, at least basic keyboards, and um, learn how to, uh, how do you say, sing and play at the same time or separately, doesn't matter, mm -hmm. and uh, and record. You know, actually, actually, the, his production class, I'm hoping his kids record my kids and, and his kids too, so so we can all collaborate. Yes. Um, but they're also going to learn stage presence and, you know, uh, mic technique and all those things that come with being on stage, you know, so that'll be yeah. fun. And in my class, we're, we're going to be making beats. We're making music. So um, my whole thing is going to be to show kids how to put music together, how to listen to music, mm -hmm. and how it's all put together. And um, our goal is we're hoping that we're going to find some kids here, which we already met an, a kid the other day that's enrolled in the program that, that are going to be like stars. You could just build Or have right some on. kind of potential. And we want to, oh, yeah. we actually want to put notebook. something together. She showed up with a notebook. She did. Lyrics. I mean, yeah, we had she was there ready the to go. Yes, and, yeah. Ready to go. We yeah. had an event. Her name is Hope. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, she was, Look I believe she's 13 years old and mm -hmm. she came to the park and, and she was enrolled in the program already. Yeah. And she wanted to come there to see us and she had this notebook in her hands. And she said, I have this whole notebook full of lyrics oh. right here. And she was like hanging on to it like it was like, precious. you know, yeah. precious to her. Yeah, yeah like Important priceless. And I was like, really? That's amazing. So the funny thing was, is I thought, you know, she might be in Mello's class mm -hmm. since it was like all about lyrics. And I was like, well, what class are you in? Are you in the lyrics class, like to do lyrics? And she said, no. I'm in the music production mm. class. And I was really mind blown at that moment because 
um, her reason was is that she wanted to figure out how to make music to go with her lyrics. Smart girl. And I thought that was really amazing. Very so, smart. Yeah. So I'm looking forward class, to that. You know? <laughs> right. 13 and already like have that, you know, like, okay, I got these lyrics down. I know how to mm -hmm. put pen to paper. We won't get feeling. into specifics, but her wordplay was out there. I was, she was, I was already amazed. Yeah. Her years. She let me that. see her lyrics and I, I, I was actually like mind blown that, be, that her lyrics were To know her backstory, really where all that passion and emotion come from. You know what I mean? Who knows? Yeah. Maybe one day she'll be a guest on the Crown Peak I'm, show. I'm sure she will be. I I would think, be. I Even now, I, I welcome her to come <laughs> on and talk to her. Right. And so her mother was really she, supportive. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Her mother was there in the park and, and um, she was really supportive and making sure that she got her there yeah. to meet who she wanted to meet. You know, and they what stuck I mean? around. That was all impactful. Day. They were there to make sure that they heard our show, that mm -hmm. they talked to us. I mean, her mother really. How mm -hmm. important is that? Do you think to have the parental support behind oh, you? Hundred yeah. I mean, percent. Yeah. That's yeah. My my mother used to tell me and my brother Sand Dog, if you're gonna be a trash man, be the best trash man. But if you wanna be <laughs> mm -hmm. the best rapper, be the try to be the best rapper. Yeah. And I think that went a long way. Mm -hmm. you know for both of us she also used to say there's going to be a million people that love you a million people that hate you and a million people that won't have an opinion any way or the other yeah so you have to try to like just don't try to please everybody just please yourself and as long as you're making music that you love everybody's going to come to your party mm -hmm. that love you exactly. yeah and that's, they're supposed I mean, to be there like for me um when i started out doing music i was really young and i'd be going to like hollywood you know recording in studios like on a, on a school night by yourself and no you know my mom would be driving me to the studio that's awesome and my mom and my dad would be getting in fights over it and everything and she'd be sticking up for me saying like you know he needs to follow his dream mm -hmm. and so that, that i think that's really important but the other part of part of that was um you know it kept me and other, and it would keep other kids out of trouble, you know, doing other things. Yeah, it's an outlet. We're hoping so. that this that we can reach a lot of kids who would otherwise do some, you know, get in trouble. You know, we really hope that. And I think we can find some superstars. I, I mean, I already saw just that little girl. That's just one kid. I mean, there's thousands yeah. of kids out there that could really use this program. So, and, and you can really see them. Sometimes you'll look at them and you can tell that they're on the cusp of. <laughs> going the wrong route, yeah. you know what I mean? You could kind of read their body we language. We just saw that yesterday. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. were some kids that we looked, looked at, it was like, ah, uh, you need this more than, you know. More than you think you do, <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. And it yeah. sucks when the kids have mm -hmm. a talent, but they're so shy or embarrassed to do it yeah. because mm -hmm. what are their friends gonna say? Yeah. yeah, I'm dealing with that with my granddaughter. She she cares more about what her friends think and, and we're always catching her in the shower, just singing her little heart out. We're like, girl, we'll do something <laughs> with that, but. She's in that phase where the friends, you know, and their opinions are more important. So I think at that age too, the parents have a lot of influence still. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not quite the older teenagers yet, or, yeah. or even at the young adults, if they have respect for the parents. But I mean, as for me, my 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 mother was the one who believed in me, and without that, I don't think I would have made it. Wow! Because you know, I got out of that town and I toured the world. It was, it was amazing because she believed in because, me. She, yeah, that's what helped me. And I saw that mom uh, encourage her little girl yesterday, and I thought, mm -hmm. okay, she's going to be. And she brought her. And she's showing her. up mm -hmm. is with her battle. lyrics, with her big notebook. I thought, okay, that's. I, I got to meet this little girl. <laughs> she sounds like a little. Fire. She's awesome. Hope. <laughs> I love that. So, so for your classes, are they all going to be the same date and time? Like, like, what day of the week is the class going to be? There's, they're going to be on Thursdays. Uh -huh. All three classes. Around. All three classes, but they're going to be different age groups okay. each hour. Okay. Um, I don't remember the age group uh, exactly the details, but it's all it's all on the on the, on the details. Eight to 11, 12 to 15, okay. 12 to 15 16 we'll to 18, on the yeah. show, 18 the yeah. But is there an opportunity for sorry, I interrupt you? Is there an opportunity for a kid to take multiple classes? No. Not yet. Okay. No. 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 I, and I think that's I think maybe in the future. We can in the future, it, perhaps once we get this thing up and running, mm -hmm. and it, and it grows some legs, and yeah. we don't we learn on the field what we can do and what we shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. what Moving works. on into um, semester two, mm -hmm. I think I think we will be able to do other things. If, if not, add DJing mm -hmm. to it all to the equation. Maybe add some percussion lessons from Abby or some other percussionist. I'll be able to decide then, like what I want to bring in. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, as it grows, there's going to be some overlap, definitely. Like, um, you know, we're going to collaborate and work together because mm -hmm. all of our areas come together. That's how we work together. Mm -hmm. And so, um, 
like our master plan and the kind of vision that we have for this is that um, we want to like find those kids that um, that have a passion for music, mm-hmm. you know, uh, different aspects because we all have played different roles in making music here. Um, and we want to work together. And our, our kind of dream and vision for this was that we would um, do a few songs with the kids and end up performing those at the end, like well, polishing yeah, those. It's, it's, a, ten, like a, it's a ten week. It's yeah. a ten week cycle. Mm-hmm. It's a, once a week for ten weeks. By the end of it, they will be performing. And so, so what's really cool about it is the kids. Like I said, uh, his kids are going to record our kids, the rappers, the vocalists, the piano mm-hmm. players, and his kids are going to make beats, and mm-hmm. we're going to collaborate. And we have we have to design all that and figure it out, but. That's the plan. So at the end of those ten weeks, is we have this big production, this big concert. Oh, that's going to be wonderful. And he's going to invite some, you know, you invite some of your friends and and uh, families, and you know, that's going to be this wonderful. Gonna be really, yeah. I'm putting that out there right now, team. We're going to be there, and we're going to get that footage so we can share it because that's exciting for the kids, and then they can see themselves on Roku. Mm-hmm. That'll be exciting. All of it together. So, what's next for you guys? Wait, first, before I forget, I want to ask, you guys had a concert, like a mini concert rehearsal in the park yesterday, right? Yes. Right. Are you going to do that again? Probably not. I think what we we accomplished what we wanted to. Mm-hmm. We got 10 new enrollees that day, yesterday, in, into the program. And I think mm-hmm. it was mission accomplished. Um, we haven't we haven't circled the wagons yet this week, uh-huh. starting tomorrow with the city council member and, and the city manager. And then yet to know if we're going to do it again. Yeah. So. But is there still room to enroll? There oh, is. Yeah. There yeah. is. That's really good. Yes. Uh, we actually do you have some school assemblies coming up. Yeah, we, we we've been visiting schools and meeting with the principals and Perfect. some of the music teachers and talking about it. So yeah, it's yes. starting. We have assemblies uh, scheduled mm-hmm. already. Um, career day. We're going to talk about ourselves. And That's great. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And again, the age range for the kids to sign up is. Eight to 21. Eight to 21. I love that you guys are going over the age of 18 Mm -hmm. because, you know, there's a lot of programs out there for kids, you know, eight to 18. Mm -hmm. There's not that many outlets and programs for kids over 18 in in any, you know, aspect, music or even business. There's a lot of free classes for under 18. So I love that. You guys are great. (laughs) So what's next though for you guys individually? What do you have coming up, Mello? Individually? I mean, I'm always doing concerts and shows. Mm-hmm. Catch me April 8th in Adelanto Stadium um, performing with Lisa Lisa, Trenere, Taps, JJ Fad, mm-hmm. No Sarah. It's going to be a dope show. So get your tickets on Eventbrite now. And then yes. also my birthday bash this year at Zendejas mm-hmm. April 14th. Um, I'll have the great legend Dana Dane from Brooklyn, New York. I'll have Rodney O. I have my friend who's here tonight. Mariah Avila yes. will be there, and uh, we're gonna have a good old time. We'll have Jimmy Reyes on the turntables, Arabian Prince, wow. and my man DJ Ace from Trinir. That's definitely gonna be a part of you guys, so try to get in there. Yeah, and that's so, April fourteenth. Mm-hmm. That's in Deja San Francisco. Right, right, right. And so you know, right now other dates are coming in too. So we'll work around the school prop uh, program, and mm-hmm. and you'll see us out there doing shows. You see me out there doing shows. For sure, Abby. What's next? Um, I have a whole bunch of singles. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to release a single a month mm-hmm. once I'm established around uh, May. I think starting around May, I've got a new music studio in Burbank that I'm gonna have a launch in April, and um, getting into music for film and TV, and Great. working with Mellow. Uh, we have some projects coming up, mm-hmm. and. Um, and just, just really, you know, wanna. Yeah, oops. it's okay. Yeah. Is that my phone? <laughs> Party foul. <laughs> the hostess's phone. <laughs> well, that's, that's exciting. Cool. Can that's you tell cool. us what the name of your next single is? Do you have it yet? Um, I, actually, I'm debating between six different songs. I have no idea which one I'm going to choose. Which one? But yeah, but, but I love that you you'll take be, your time. You'll be one of the first people to know, though. I know. I'm gonna I love that. Them. Yeah. You'll be like, is it ready? Is it ready? Is it ready? Yeah. I just I just fell in love so much with flying. Yeah. But Bronick, what's next for you, babe? I'm working on all kinds of stuff. Um working on beats, making beats always, of course. Um You're supposed to be having a beat for me and Mariah. Like, oh, no. <laughs> we're gonna cook that up, yeah. Um but we're of course collaborating together and getting this whole program going, but um also working on some stuff for film and TV because mm-hmm. that's like a big big area right now, music. Um, so we're going to be 
doing a lot of new stuff together too. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are a good team. I could feel the energy. Just very, very creative uh, trio right here. So well, thank you guys nice. for being here. I'm going to make sure I post on the, uh, the break, the flyers for every event you guys have coming up, but cool. especially the school in La Puente for ages eight to 21. Do you want to give them your uh, your tags, Instagram, where they can follow you? Absolutely. Mellow underscore man underscore ace. And mine is at Abby Loces. And by the way, it's L-O-C-E-S. A-B-B-Y-L-O-C-E-S. And mine is produced by Bronick, B-R-O-N-E-K. Perfect. And this is the Crown Peach Show. Follow us, subscribe, send us a message. But if you do, make sure you keep it simple. Kiss it. That's how we do. Return to the noise. That's how we do. How we do. You know it's how we do. Here goes. Kick off your shoes. Relax your feet. Okay. Keep your eyes burned. Step chair. Bring the heat. Yeah. Class is in session. Everybody take a seat. You got a problem at the class? In the street. Now everywhere I speak, haters got a problem with me. But these real niggas love me, so they riding with me. Help you live out your plans about dying to get.